time when the Yatra times, eating times getting established, then the previous person has not really set the right foundation for the movement at all, and there were so many problems. He worked tirelessly visiting all the different places in Malaysia, going around meeting all the devotees and encouraging them in his own very personal way, dealing with all the devotees. This is, of course, what endears him to so many people, that he's such a, that he's able, while he has such a big position and he carries so much responsibility, but at the same time, he's always very personal. And so, of course, that's a very difficult thing to do. Many of the leaders in our movement, they have so much responsibility that they, they don't have time to hardly relate to other people. But His Holiness Jayapadaka Swami Maharaj, that while he's one of the biggest leaders in the movement, he at the same time is always very personal and he's always concerned and open to be with them and to share experiences with them joke with them. Uh, you, I really appreciate how Jai Pataka Maharaj is able to engage so many devotees in Krishna's service at any time. You know, it's not an easy thing to think how to keep people engaged in Krishna's service. But Jai Pataka Maharaj is able to do this very expertly. He can have any number of devotees with him. He can keep them all engaged in Krishna's service. At the same time, uh, wherever he goes, it's always Krishna consciousness and there's always so much fun. When we go on Parikra, you know, he'll always be with the devotees. Uh, some take them swimming to go in the Jalangi. And when you go in the Jalangi with them, it will be Krishna conscious. There will be no fooling around. There will be Krishna conscious games. And uh, when when we go to uh, the one temple in uh, Navadvip Parikram, it's the temple of Lord Gadarhar. It's the temple, the de original deities of Vanina, uh, Vijjavanina, the original Lord Gadarhar deities. So Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, I remember every year you get the devotees roll in the dust there, actually it's all grass, it's a nice place to roll. And he will personally roll himself, you know, he lay down on the ground, he'll start rolling, and he'll say, this is what you have to do, you get the dust of the dam. You know, and, this, and this way he'll inspire all the devotees to give up the bodily conception of life and take the dust of the dam all over the body. He always likes to uh, look after the welfare of the bodies, make sure they're being cared for. He's always concerned. He will say, "Are you getting enough prasada? Your, are you your uh, staying arrangements all right?" He's always concerned for the devotees. Very personal. Sometimes we we will see also Chaitanya Maharaj uh, going through so many austerities himself. How he's constantly traveling which is such a difficult thing to do. But still he continues to do it. Any time of the day or night, he could come walking in the temple. It used to be like that, and we never know what time he would come, even. Because his, his, his life is like that. It's 24 hours a day for the service of Krishna. So he's such a wonderful example. We can see he's got so many wonderful achievements. Uh, he's helped so many of us in our Krishna consciousness. I was, when I wrote my offering film this year, I was remembering how we went on these, uh, we went to Lankawi. There was the uh, few days uh, convention there in Lankawi. And we were swimming, and when Maharaj was out there swimming, he met two devotees, they said, please save us. We can't get back to the shore. 
you know, sometimes when you go swimming at these islands, the current is very strong. And you get out, you go out there in the water, but it's very difficult to come back. And so there were a couple of young devotees out there, and fortunately for them, Jack Pataka Swami came out there and, you know, they pleaded with him. They asked, please save us. We can't get back to the shore. And so he, he took one back, and then he came back, rescued the other one. Saved them both from the ocean of, you know, <laughs> material existence. Yeah. So I was thinking how, you know, that day he saved two souls, but actually he saved countless souls by his constant traveling and preaching, by his giving Krishna consciousness to everyone. And we can see also in Mayapur how Mayapur is developing and why is it developing? It's really because of his presence there that he brought many of the devotees there and he will personally go house to house to visit every grihasta there. He'll go and visit them in their homes. He will go around each house and visit each of their homes and, you know, just to meet them and spend some time with them. How are you doing? He has his bicycle, he had a bicycle there also, you know, he ride his bicycle around to go and meet the different devotees. And so it's just wonderful how he has dedicated his life. He's such a nice example for all of us. So today is a very nice day where we can express a small appreciation for him and all of his efforts to spread Krishna consciousness. And the best way we can repay him is by dedicating our own selves and trying to do our best to assist him in this mission of Krishna consciousness. If he sees us, if he sees that we're all working together, happily cooperating, trying to spread Krishna consciousness, then this will be his greatest pleasure. So we certainly hope that he will stay with us longer because we need people like his caliber are so rare and we need these kind of leaders in the Krishna consciousness movement. We've already lost a few of our very important leaders and we kind of bear to think that we would ever lose his holiness Jaitataka Swami Maharaj. So, Srila Jaitataka Swami Maharaj. Jai. Thank you very much.